Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video we'll be doing the review of this Pixel 8. Uh, by the way guys, this is not my in-depth full review because I've been using this device for about four and a half days. And uh, in this video, I wanted to give you my practical experience. What are the things that I have noticed about this one? Because Google was talking a lot about AI and some of the other features that this smartphone can do. So in the past five days, some of the features that I used and that really made a difference, I want to showcase that and some of the things that I have noticed. This. In fact, uh, here are all the pointers that I'll be covering and yes, I'll also be covering about some of the heating issues and the processor performance and all that. Okay, so first thing and uh, by the way guys, that comes in this box as a review unit. I've also got this 8 Pro but I will be covering the 8 Pro later on. So this comes inside this box. This is the device itself. Nothing much inside the box as you can expect. We just get this USB Type-C cable and also a USB uh, Type-C to Type-A adapter. That's it, no charger in the box. That's how we call it a flagship these days, I guess. And as you can see, I have actually put in my primary SIM in this one. That's my ATEL SIM. And all the testing that I have done is with my ATEL SIM because uh, the Pixel in India, it just has one physical SIM. The second SIM is actually the e SIM. So I have put my ATEL uh, SIM on this one. Again, like a typical flagship, guys, uh, uh, the build quality is really good on this one. The back is also glass. In fact, uh, this is having Gorilla Glass Victus 1 on this one. Whereas the Pixel 8 Pro has the Victus 2. Uh, but here, uh, this is actually not a matte glass, but at least in this color, they call this the rose color. But I would say this color looks very close to peach. And in fact, the fingerprints are not visible. Again, we have the visor like this, uh, and this is also metallic. So in terms of build quality, I don't have a problem. Again, fingerprint scanner also no issues. This time with Pixel 8, and Pixel 8 Pro, uh, you also, uh, that face unlocking is there and that's a lot more secure. So even for banking apps and stuff like that, you can use it. I personally did not use it because I feel the, the fingerprint scanner is something that I like. But again, still it's an optical fingerprint scanner. In terms of performance, I do not have a problem. But considering the premium that uh, Pixel is charging, and yes, I'll talk about the India pricing in the later part of the video, uh, they should have actually gone with the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. This is a regular fingerprint scanner, but in terms of functionality, I don't have an issue. Okay, moving to the next thing uh, is uh, and some of you have asked me this is regarding the cellular call call uh, quality and uh, connectivity and as i've told you guys i'm using it with my airtel uh, sim and as you can see uh, i did not have any issues with this uh, it's uh, my primary sim is in this one and uh, in the last uh, almost five odd days i did not have any network issues or call quality info, uh, issues in fact the call quality is excellent on this one in fact there is one feature on uh, these pixel 8 and the 8 pro and by default it's not enabled i've actually uh, uh, save the screenshot so if you're getting it enable it and uh, this is uh, actually let me show you uh yeah it's basically called clear calling and it's actually disabled by default i don't know why google has disabled it by default but if you enable this one even in noisy environments and stuff like that when you take calls it will be crystal crystal clear i have to say the call quality of this one after enabling this feature was super good so in terms of call quality and even uh, the calls with the speakerphone i do not have any issues but guys this is with my airtel sim i haven't tested it with uh, the geo sim so again if you are looking for network connectivity with geo sims uh, uh, check with some other reviews who have used with the geo sim also uh, coming to what you say 5g speeds uh, 5g speeds also work good on this one i did not have any issues regarding that so that way at least on airtel network in india i'm not having any network issues with this uh, smartphone uh, next thing is uh, regarding uh, the charging speed some of you have asked me uh, the charging speeds i would say up to the first 50 percent it charges fairly quickly about 35 percent but for the full charge uh, while i was testing i was draining it low around four percent or something and from there four percent to hundred percent it was taking almost one hour 25 minutes in fact what i've noticed is that after 90 percent the charging speeds are painfully slow on this one so uh, yes up to that first 50 percent will charge fairly quickly but for that full charge again it's pretty slow i would say compared to the competition and some of the other flagships in fact the charging speed is slightly improved uh, this is now supporting up to 27 watts of uh, pd charging regarding the battery life on this one and this one is actually having a 4575 milliamp hour battery and i was also very skeptical about the battery because of the tensor uh, what do you say processor but luckily i would say the battery life is pretty decent on this one and let me actually show you again i saved some screenshots so let me give you an idea about it okay 
uh, this is uh, after about one and a half days of typical usage uh, but again not super heavy usage I would say uh, this uh, this scenario it was 80% on what do you say Wi-Fi and only 20% on mobile data here I got after about one and a half the standby time is actually good that is something I like even at night uh, the idle rate is not that much so about one and a half days uh, that I got these other apps or whatever and um, here I actually used it uh, 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 mostly about 80% time on mobile data and here also I got a screen on time of about five hours uh, but again this is not with gaming and stuff regular uh, usage and uh, so you can expect anywhere from about four and a half to about six hours of SOT on uh, this one so the battery life is decent it's not extraordinarily good or bad i would say it's decent and if you're a person who charges your phone every day at night then i feel battery life will not be a issue on this device okay next thing uh, let's talk about is uh, regarding the screen quality and the size of this one and i really like the size on uh, this one now this is slightly smaller at 6.2 inches but i really like the compact form factor of this one because with a single hand without any hand gymnastics you can access the entire phone and uh, uh, this is a uh, very nice to hold i would say that way i really like it and also coming to the screen uh, here i noticed that the screen gets significantly brighter google claims 2000 nits and I think so that's accurate because even when I was shooting some photos and videos outdoors, uh, I did uh, the screen was uh, adequately bright. So that way, even in outdoor conditions, good. And the screen quality is excellent on this one. They have used a beautiful, beautiful and pretty accurate screen. Coming to the stereo speakers, yes, it does have stereo speakers and they're pretty loud. Let's just try to, let me just skip it. And as you can see. The sound quality is uh, actually pretty uh, decent, I would say. Uh, it's similar to many of the flagship, but in terms of loudness, it's adequately loud, but not the loudest that I've seen among smartphone. But overall, I would say uh, the stereo separation, though it doesn't have fancy gimmicks of Dolby Atmos or anything like that, but the stereo separation and the quality that you get from the speakers is very good. So that way, in terms of speakers, also I do not have a problem. And in fact, it does have a little bit of depth. But again, in terms of maximum loudness, uh, this is not the loudest. I've seen some smartphones that are slightly louder than this. But again, for 95% of you, I would say uh, you will be happy with the speaker because of this I, I didn't have an issue with that the uh, haptic feedback this is something that most of the smartphones actually forget uh, yes the UI is clean and all this thing but how are the haptics that is the vibration motor calibrated when you are within the UI pixel has always nailed it and with this pixel 8 and even the 8 pro uh, they continue to refine it I would say in terms of haptic feedback uh, these are one of the best goddamn smartphones out there in terms of the overall haptic feedback and some of the other android manufacturers should take some cues from what pixel is actually doing so in terms of haptic feedback brilliant i would say just brilliant okay next thing uh, is uh, regarding the uh, what do you say processor on this one and that's the tensor g3 processor and many of you were asking me about the tensor g3 processor what about the performance and if you notice the general performance is good i in within the ui and everything you don't notice any lag or anything uh, and again i've posted it to 120 hertz again this uh, new screen does support 120 hertz it's on 120 hertz and that way within the ui and everything it uh, has no issues and also in terms of heating i have to say this tensor g3 it heats up a lot less compared to the other uh, Tensor G2 or the other uh, earlier pixels that we had. Uh, in fact, I would say, uh, yes, don't get me wrong, the heating is not completely soft. Uh, it does get a little bit warm here at the back when you are actively uh, using the phone, but it does not get hot like what was happening with the pixel 7 series even with normal usage so that way i would say the heating is controlled on this one it's very similar to the snapdragon 8 gen 1 in terms of the heating what i have noticed so yes it will get a little bit warm at the back and even the railings when you're shooting video and stuff like that but it does not get very hot like what the pixel 7 actually did also in terms of benchmarks uh, I actually ran a Geekbench 6 on this one. Let me just show you. I think so. I saved the screenshot of that one. Uh, yes. And if you look at the scores, uh, these scores are very close to uh, what we were getting with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So that is regarding the processor. But again, these just processing numbers are... Uh, 
uh, something that only uh, if you are a benchmark nerd you might find it not that impressive but again this smartphone is not about the benchmarks what it can do because in terms of AI processing this smartphone is in another league compared to any other smartphone and that's why I feel this smartphone is one of the smartest smartphone and let's now talk about some of the AI features and stuff that this Tensor G3 actually has okay uh, the first thing and uh, before that before that okay let me talk about this uh, because some of you will ask me and I would say if you are sort of a, you can do gaming with this one I did play Call of Duty and stuff and it played fine but I feel if you are sort of a heavy gamer or you game a lot then I will not recommend you this phone because what I've noticed is that with gaming after about 10 odd minutes of gaming the handset tends to get actually pretty hot so again I will not recommend it for gamers okay now let's talk about uh, some of the AI features that I have actually used in daily life and that's why this phone is very very different okay so let's talk about that one and uh, first thing is again AI capabilities that uh, they have on uh, within the phone and for this you don't even require internet connection in fact the voice to typing is so good on this phone let me give you an example again i'm just using the recorder app but you can use it on anything for example uh, with the keyboard also you can use this uh, but let me give you an idea okay this is a recording app and i'm just talking and if you notice it's transcribing what i'm talking and this is done within the device itself it's not uploading to the cloud or anything and it's in real time and this is what makes the pixel very very different from any other smartphone stuff like this and this is what is uh, behind the scenes the AI stuff that it is using so this is just transcribing and uh, I'm just blabbering and it's getting a things right so yeah so you can use this again even for let let's say you're tweeting something or whatever like this you can use this I'm just going to use the voice command to type this tweet and I think so it will get it right. That's the power of the Pixel AI as you can see. So I have been actually uh, replying to a lot of messages and stuff and small replies on WhatsApp etc just using the voice to do it and this is what the Pixel actually does very very well. Okay let's move to one of the next uh, things that I noticed. This is again regarding AI. AI magic editor. Okay uh, let's just go to camera and uh, let's just take one of my own photographs uh, uh, this is a new feature that they added okay uh, okay let's ha huh, let's just take my photograph like this and if i go to the edit you have this new option now uh, that is called ai magic editor again uh, we also have the magic eraser and all these things but this is the new one and if you uh, tap on this this will take a couple of seconds and say tap what you want to do or stuff like that for example this is my photograph and it's fine okay let me just tap myself so it has auto selected my uh, myself and now i can hold this and move it here and let's just reduce the size also and see if it does and this actually takes time 15 20 seconds uh, but you get an idea if you have a picture of a couple of people or you didn't get it right and with this you can actually fix a lot of stuff and this does take 15-20 seconds because this is doing actually a lot of AI processing it's AI is actually going to generate a photograph most of the time it does it right and as you can see it got this right and the results are very very good actually this is surprisingly good on this one let's just save it and you can just save it so to give, uh, give you an idea about the original this was the original and this is the ai generated one and you can also remove stuff and all these things uh, that we have seen also that's also very easy for example let's just okay let's just take this one and let's just go to the edit again i'm going to use the magic eraser uh, sorry uh, ai uh, magic editor and i can just tap this okay it has automatically selected now i can move it or let's say let's erase this Again, uh, the only thing I don't like is that this takes a couple of seconds, 15 to 20 seconds to do this. So this is what it's doing in the background. So again, yes, it has removed it. Yes, I see some shadow over here, but overall, yeah, you it does this stuff. For example, let's just save it to see before and after. This is what it did. And this is what the, oh, in fact, yes, there was that shadow behind this. So it retained that okay so again as you can see so this is the new ai magic editor 
and uh, this is actually very very good in fact for video also it can do a lot of things and this is one feature that i really really liked on this one and uh, that's actually known as the audio magic eraser this works on video for example if you have shot a video uh, um, and uh, there is a lot of background noise or something like that that ruins the video this is supposed to fix it and let me actually uh, give you two examples where i use this to get an idea so that you can be a judge how well this works. Hi guys, I am actually in my bathroom and to test this feature, uh, Google says that while you are shooting video, you can actually remove unwanted audio from that they call this uh, uh, AI magic audio eraser or something like that. And if you notice, there is actually uh, this noise coming from my exhaust fan, I need to fix it. It's a constant noise and I thought this one would be a very good real world test. Uh, can this tool actually remove this irritating sound that is coming and if it is able to do that then I feel this tool can be very very useful for people who shoot video with their smartphones. Doing one more recording with the front facing camera and there is some construction work going on there and again we'll try to uh, see if this magic audio eraser can remove sounds like this because this might be a typical scenario where you are blogging and stuff like that so this is a, going to be a super realistic tough test for the audio magic eraser so in fact that audio magic eraser of the videos worked much much better than what i expected and that can be a game changer for people who shoot video on the go with their smartphone so this is a big game changer i would uh, uh, say and now moving to some things that I do not like uh, and this is regarding the Pixel 8 specifically and Google has disabled these features intentionally so that they could just give it on the Pro and I don't like it. For example, uh, though this one is also having the main camera is that 50 megapixel uh, sensor same as the uh, Pro but here in the photograph options we do not have the Pro mode. Uh, whereas uh, they could have easily given the pro mode that's why even though it's a 50 megapixel sensor that we are having always the pictures that we shoot are pixel bent we can't shoot raw 50 megapixels so i feel that's an artificial limitation what google is doing another thing that i do not like is uh, that um, also uh, with the pro mode it's not yet enabled but they're going to do it as a feature drop on the 8 pro uh, when you shoot the video uh, at night uh, specifically uh, and again this is the video toggle and all this thing there is that extra hdr processing that will be available they call this a new feature called video boost mode and um, this is actually done on the google cloud it's not yet enabled on the 8 pro but this 8 pro will be getting it as a feature drop later on and that is also disabled on this pixel 8 so these are some of the uh, features that can be enabled on the pixel 8 but just google to differentiate the 8 pro from this one they have disabled these features on the 8 uh, pixel 8 and that is something i really really did not like because i didn't expect stuff like this from google uh, the hardware is present it has the capacity to do it but just to differentiate to a different product you are disabling this feature so I simply do not like it i hope google takes this feedback and maybe enables some of these features advanced features with a feature update anyways now uh, talking about the camera as of, you saw the ai capabilities are very very good in fact it can read web pages and stuff like that easily translation is very very good in another language it just does it on the fly and all those things but now let's also look at the camera the main camera as of totally 50 megapixel and the second is ultra wide and here are some of the camera samples that i have taken with this uh, smart Phone. Pixels have always done great in uh, low lighting and difficult lighting conditions and that's the same case even with this Pixel 8. Night shots actually come out very good. But this is the regular shot that is 1x and this is 2x digital zoom. Just notice the clarity. This is actually 4x digital zoom and this is actually 8x digital zoom. So even with 8x digital zoom, Pixel is able to get very good pics. Another thing that I liked is that even when you're shooting directly towards the sun, the HDR capabilities are just outstanding on Pixel. And that's the same case even with this Pixel 8. The dynamic range is excellent on Pixel 8. The highlights and shadows are preserved. Also, we have the macro mode. And as you can see, the macro mode is also doing a very good job. Even for very close up objects, you can take good shots. And these pics were shot with the front facing camera. And this was in portrait mode. And in portrait mode, I feel it blurs too much. Shooting this video with the rear facing camera and I've set it to actually 4K. By default, it's at 1080p. And this is the 1X. And let's just see if we can go directly to the 
ultra wide yes directly within the video we can go to the ultra wide i'll just push back to 1x and uh, let's do the walking test to see how is the stabilization at least in the preview it looks uh, pretty good and stable so that's actually good and uh, we also have that 2x zoom within the video as you can see this is the regular 1x so i'm just going to run and see they don't advertise any what do you say gimbal stabilization or anything but i was just jogging a little bit so this is a quick idea about the video recording capabilities and i saw some samples earlier i feel uh, the video re uh, recording capabilities have definitely improved in this uh, pixel 8 series so uh, regarding the conclusion and this is again with the front facing camera of the pixel 8 and i'm recording it at 4k um, I would say the initial impressions, again, this is not my full in-depth review, but just based on about four and a half to five days of usage. Overall, I would say uh, Google got a lot of things right with the Pixel 8. If you guys recall, I could never recommend the Pixel 7 series, uh, though they were aggressively priced because of some of the major issues that had. Google has actually solved it, and this is a lot polished product, I would say. But to be very frank, I simply do not like the India pricing of this uh, Pixel 8. It starts at about 76,000 or something like that. Even with discounts, I feel the pricing is a little bit high. So they should have been a lot more aggressive, I would say. If the pricing would have been closer to the launch of the Pixel 7, this would have been great. Uh, and also regarding heating, as I have already mentioned, the heating has reduced uh, considerably, I would say, uh, compared to the Pixel 7 series. Uh, but again, the phone does tend to get a little bit warm with usage. But again, it's not as bad as it was on the Pixel 7 series, which I simply could not recommend. Uh, I would say uh, in terms of heating, this is very similar to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, not the 8, Gen, uh, 8 Plus Gen 1, but the 8 Gen 1. That also used to get a little bit warm to touch with the usage. So that's what it is. But overall, I would say um, this is a far, far, far better polished product. And if we forget about the pricing in India, Google has got a lot of things right. I also have the Pixel uh, uh, 8 Pro with me. So I will be also covering that. So do let me know what do you want. Again, yes, it does have a lot of AI features, which I will try to include in a separate different video because that's what makes the Pixel very, very different from other smartphone but overall i would say this time google has caught a lot of things and polished right on this smartphone anyways guys that's it for now thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys and if you guys are not subscribed hit that subscribe button take care bye bye